ambitions and aspirations of your people towards a better future, believing in its right to achieve their ambitions and aspirations. I reaffirm, Mr. President, our complete appreciation for your efforts for the stability and security of your homeland. Mr. President, uh, I have held the discussions, the bilateral discussions with you today that were fruitful and productive, that reflect uh, the uh, will of our countries to, uh, re to reinforce the, the partnership between our countries. And despite of the regional and the international challenges, Egypt is not sparing any effort to stand with the people of South Sudan, building capacities and technical capabilities in different fields. I have also reaffirmed the complete Egyptian support for the President Salva Kiir and all the South Sudanese parties to achieve stability. And I would like to commend the efforts exerted by political parties in South Sudan to move forward with the election entitlement in December of next year and we fully support the government to meet the aspirations of the Sudanese people towards stability and development. Ladies and gentlemen, we discussed today the ways to promote the military and security coordination between our countries in this very critical stage and we are coordinating our uh, efforts to keep preserving the stability of the region. We consulted together about the Sudanese crisis and its implication on the region, especially the direct neighboring countries, especially Egypt and South Sudan. We agreed on intensifying um, efforts to find the permanent solution for the crisis and sparing the Sudanese people more destruction. And we agreed on calling upon all the Sudanese parties to rise above all conflicts and avoiding any foreign interventions that might deepen the challenge and the conflict and prolonging the crisis. The Egyptian uh, and South Sudanese role is critical in solving the Sudanese problem, especially that these two states are the most understanding of the nature of this tribal crisis. And we reaffirm the course of dialogue to settle the crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, our discussions tackled the coordination and cooperation between the two countries and our efforts to maximize the use of the River Nile. And I reaffirmed the Egyptian vision that the Nile must be a resource of cooperation as a lifeline of all the Nile Basin countries. We also showcased the and discussed the Ethiopian Dam calls. And in conclusion, my brother, President Salva Kiir, I would like to use this opportunity to reaffirm my, that Egypt will always remain the friend of the South Sudanese people and we are committed to provide all kinds of support for the coordination of the two countries and the international community is fulfilling their pledges towards South Sudan in their course toward constructing a better future. Thank you. Thank you very much. حاضرين في هذا المؤتمر الصحفي ويسعدني أن أتواجد هنا كما 
سمعنا من الرئيس السيسي We've heard from President Sisley. We just concluded our meeting as we discussed a number of issues, bilateral issues, and on the international and regional levels. As a country that is in need for development, a rapid human development, I have discussed with His Excellency Mr. President Sisi how to uh, maximize the, the use of the Memorandum of Understanding signed between our countries and between our governments in the field of education to support uh, our students studying here in Egypt uh, and on the regional level we exchanged visions regarding the ongoing conflict in Sudan and especially Worsen, the worsening humanitarian situation. President Sisi and I see that dialogue is the only way to end the conflict. And personally, I hope that we keep on working and making progress on the issues that we have discussed today. Thank you once again, Mr. President, for hosting us. Thank you. And uh, that was uh, the joint press conference between President Abdel Fattah Sisi and the South Sudanese President Salva Kiir, where uh, they spoke about a number of things that uh, they include uh, regional issues in addition to the mutual cooperation between the two nations. Uh, the President, President Abdel Fattah Sisi, spoke about uh, the crisis in Sudan and uh, how the conflict affects the region and how there should be an end to this uh, situation and the only way out would be dialogue. Uh, also, um, President Salva Kiir spoke about the same idea, saying that South Su rather the Sudan crisis, the only way out of it would be through dialogue. Uh, we're joined again uh, by uh, Madam Ambassador Swa Chalabi, the former Assistant Foreign Minister. Good evening. Good afternoon, rather, to you, Madam. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm not sure if you heard uh, the entire press conference or not, but uh, they just had the joint press conference where they basically yes. discussed specifically uh, the uh, conflict happening in Sudan right now. Um, what are your thoughts on what was said during the conference? Uh, well, as you know, there, is, there are, there, there are um, very close relations between the two leaders. The two presidents have uh, met uh, several times on um, summits and in uh, uh, joint uh, uh, meetings, and they both uh, agree that they have to coordinate their positions, especially on the political level, uh, where the two countries uh, are very uh, friendly and they both uh, support each other in international level and in the, uh, during yes. political challenges. Uh, both uh, countries uh, look for, or, uh, for achieving peace and stability in the region. Um, South Sudan is important for Egypt because it's a Nile Basin country yes. and it's a country uh, in the Horn of Africa. So uh, Egypt uh, regards uh, South Sudan as a, an important country to um, to negotiate uh, and mediate the situation in Sudan, uh, especially that uh, ceasefire is uh, supposed to be sustainable and uh, requested in, uh, in Sudan, where um, uh, South Sudan and Egypt can play a bigger role in uh, achieving this 
goal of peace and security uh, in uh, Sudan. Yes. Uh, there were also like uh, these uh, messages sent out by both presidents where they spoke about how uh, the uh, crisis in Sudan will not be resolved through arms, but rather through dialogue. But also the president spoke about uh, the idea of avoiding uh, uh, intervention by foreign forces or foreign uh, entities. Uh, what do you believe these messages, uh, uh, will they be you know, heard by the Sudanese side? Will there be some sort of way to uh, you know, settle the conflict down? Well, there is uh, pressure, of course, from the international community, especially now that uh, all the, the attention is going to Gaza. So uh, four months uh, of uh, fighting between uh, the two factions in Sudan has uh, brought the country into a disastrous situation. And uh, also the civilians are requesting and uh, many uh, Civil NGOs are yes. pressuring the military, military uh, stop of, uh, of all the uh, atrocities that are happening in uh, Sudan. Mm. So uh, bilateral uh, negotiations and mediation, and especially the pressure of uh, Egypt and South Sudan today uh, to dialogue and to, uh, to have a peaceful settlement of disputes in Sudan mm. is very important. Uh, as you know, South Sudan uh, uh, has uh, spoken today about the permanent uh, consultation. They did a permanent consultation, joint coordination regarding also the, the dam, the, the, regarding the, the Ethiopian dam. Yes. And they have uh, decided that also they have to. Uh, um, to com they confirmed that the, the importance is to give each country the yes. uh, the, the right for their um, the, to get the benefits of uh, the, the water of the Nile, and of course to respect the legal situation and the legal um, uh, uh, legal rules and, and uh, laws that are. Uh, bringing the common interest of all the nine basic countries. Um, so, so back to the uh, conflict in Sudan, and, and, and well, we're going to get back to the results of them. Uh, but uh, when it comes to the conflict in, in Sudan, do you believe that uh, that, that uh, the uh, Egyptian and the South Sudanese side could be some form of uh, mediators and have some sort of roundtable talks between the warring parties to settle this conflict uh, within the near future? Or is this not something that is possible between the warring parties in Sudan? Excuse me, I didn't hear the question. Um, I, I'm asking, uh, Madam Ambassador, if uh, the South Sudanese, uh, if the South Sudan and Egypt can somehow create uh, some sort of, sort of mediation process between the two warring sides uh, in uh, Sudan, or is this something that the, the both parties in Sudan are not, uh, you know, accepting, or they're not looking to find some sort of mediation? Of course, uh, of course, in the, in the international community and Egypt and Sudan and all the the both neighbors of Sudan, seven countries that are neighbors are are hoping to reach an agreement mm -hmm. and uh, and this will um, this uh, the, the ceasefire sustainable ceasefire will not happen except uh, with all these uh, countries pressuring the two factions to stop because it is not uh, it is not a, a, it is not uh, mm -hmm. normal that it continues for four months and the displaced and those who are living the, the civilian population of Sudan who are fleeing the country and leaving the, uh, their homes and uh, those who are living in the, um, in the displaced in, yes. in uh, tents around the, in Chad, around the borders of Sudan is something very depressing. So there has to be a peace agreement, there has to be a peace process, there has to be a stop to the uh, fighting. And uh, the both countries, Egypt and uh, South Sudan, can be uh, playing a bigger role in uh, supporting uh, the peace uh, negotiations between 
the soft action, especially yes. that also Saudi Arabia has a meeting uh, between both uh, sides and trying to also support the efforts aiming to achieve a political settlement. Um, so, Madam Ambassador, given what's happening uh, in the region as well, with what's happening from the Israeli bombardments of Gaza, do you believe that uh, the, the diversion from what's happening in Sudan due to the increased conflict and the increased violence taking place in the Gaza Strip, has this also negatively affected the situation on the ground in Sudan, since no one is basically focused on what's happening right now in Sudan? Of course, uh, the, even uh, what is happening in Ukraine, you know, like uh, the media has been focusing on Ukraine for the past few uh, uh, months and, and then Sudan, but now it is only Gaza that is hijacking all the media um, channels. But um, uh, this will, I think, will, <coughs> will, it's another pressure that the public opinion and the media and the Social media have focused on a different uh, crisis, so uh, the Sudanese uh, have to know that uh, the, there is a, a saturation period for uh, for the the crisis. That they have to think positively how to stop uh, the fighting. And since uh, uh, the whole world has been looking, at the, even the humanitarian aid is, is not arriving uh, regularly to Sudan as it was before. And uh, those who have been displaced need to go back to their country uh, uh, because the, the, the illegal Im immigrants uh, uh, who, are, uh, who are received by yes. countries around in the region are not going to continue to live there to accept them. Uh, they have to go back and to their country. So that is why the uh, problem of Sudan uh, has been uh, overshadowed now because of what is happening in, in Gaza, of course. Okay, Ambassador Suhaj Chalabidi, former Assistant Foreign Minister, thank you so much uh, for joining us over the phone. We're going to take a short break and uh, move on.